Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the 1987 Tonka Spiral Zone toy line. This toy line was based off of a show which was ahead of its time. It was a 65 episode syndicated show about technologically created zombies in a way. And just like the show, the toy line was a bit ahead of its time. This toy line is a bit challenging to collect. Not a lot of the stuff is out there. But even less resources exist. Talking about this, I'm going to have this to be a 100% inclusive resource. The most inclusive resource on YouTube and the most on the internet. We'll do this. Coming up. Okay, looking at standard articulation for a figure. This is a Hero Taco with none of the soft goods on them and no accessories or anything. But... Here's the head side to side, and the shoulder joint goes all the way around. Then you have about that much range, and then you do have 90 at the elbow. And then the hands turn like that. No way swivel, which is fine because once they're armored up, they don't really need it. You can go out to the side and front about 90, back to the, about the 90, and then you have 90 in the knee. So there was some posability to these. Uh, I don't know, kind of similar to Joe, but Joe did have some more going on with waist articulation these actually have hand articulation but the bandai versions that came before this have way more articulation and are superior but they were trying to bring this over at a lower price point than the bandai so i understand why they did it this way they still look good on a shelf all right so here he is all armored up and with his backpack and stuff on uh this guy is pretty back heavy uh anyhow i'm kind of holding him up but you can see he's a little bit taller than G.I. Joe Classified Duke, and uh, and a little bit uh, taller than some random uh, Star Wars figure I pulled off my son's shelf there, so Black Series. So that's kind of the height and size of this guy. All right, I'm gonna cheat with this here. Uh, one of the things that I have done with some of these figures is is do the whole method where you, you add in the polish in the joints and it makes them stiffer. I did it on this one, so maybe I should uh, do it on that one too. So. Looking at this, this is Hero, Lieutenant Hero Taka, and he has just a ton of stuff. I think this one might have the most stuff, or maybe not. It's just, just a lot of stuff that goes with this guy. So he's got like what seems to be a Gatlin gun here, a Gatlin kind of cannon, and it clicks. Doesn't hold on very well. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, over here, he has another kind of a gun there, which is interesting. And all these guns are connected to the backpack via these little, they're, they're rubber pieces, rubber connector pieces. Here's another accessory. It's kind of, I don't really know what it is, like a double blade kind of accessory to fight with. So we can sword fight with that or whatever. And then he's got this other giant gun. It looks like a, like a Super Nintendo Super Scope gun, kind of. So uh, really interesting, there's his backpack. That's what his backpack looks like. So it's got this thing that you can clip his accessories on. And, and I think you're supposed to be able to click, clip all of his accessories on this backpack, but it just doesn't work for me. So I, I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's supposed to go, but they all come with the soft goods. So the zone riders, the good guys have this, it's a camo kind of a, like a, a, a gray camo, almost like a desert fatigue kind of, but it's in a gray. And then they, they come with boots and then they come with the sidearm. Now the 12 uh, additional accessory packs come with stuff, but uh, you don't get any accessory packs that come with boots and none of them come with the official original clothes. It's all different types of clothes. Now they also all come with not only this, but they, they come with a whole cassette. So there'll be a, a cassette and then the instructions in there. And then they have stickers that get applied to them and all of that. So uh, I, I just have one of these that goes to Colonel Dirk Courage, which we'll talk about him in a second. But on the inside of this, they do have some bios and stuff like that. And then they kind of identify sort of what the weapons are. You've got the dual long range needler rifle with a mile scope system and all that stuff. So not really gonna go into what everything is called, but it's kind of fun if you have these and you can kind of catch up on what's going on. Okay, so we'll move a little quicker now that we've kind of gone over some basics with the first one. So this is Lieutenant, second Lieutenant Max Jones and here's his stuff going on with him and he's got some bios and things like that in here 
that we can read. Uh, interesting though, like trying to say, well, what all does he have? Well, he has the supercharged needler assault rifle. Didn't Hero just have the needler, needler assault rifle? But anyway, this one is different. First of all, uh, let's go ahead and get a look at his face real quick here. And so that's his face. He looks uh, like Max Jones. And a lot of people lose this little hose right here. So, uh, including myself. So, so anyway, uh, the hose is the hardest part to get on this guy. He does come with armor. And, and all of these actually do come with these chest armor and then the backpacks clip in. And I'll show that here in a bit on it, probably on a different one. But he's the only one that I know of that comes with all this armor. Some of them have gauntlets, but he's got the leg armor and, of course, the standard uh, boots. And I could probably get him to stand without having the assistance of this sledgehammer behind us. But anyhow, looking at the side here, uh, this gun, I can't get him to hold it like properly. So every picture I see is kind of holding it like this. And it does actually clip on the side right here. You can hold it in position. That's another way to store it and display it. Now, this guy is when you start having some accessories that do stuff. These are handcuffs. And so basically you can uh, cuff somebody that's zoned and then safely escort them back, I guess. Something like that. Anyhow, that's the whole point of that. I. I I don't do anything with it other than display it, but that's the whole idea is that uh, someone that's zoned is a zombie or whatever, and you're just going to handcuff them and pull them back out of the zone, and then they'll become de-zombified. So really a cool figure. One of the harder ones to get, one of the ones people chase after uh, the most, especially because he's he's just one that's uh, a challenge to pick up. So anyhow, he does have all the stickers on him, I think. I think this is all of the stickers that go on him on his backpack and on his shoulder here. I think there might be more that's supposed to go right here. Uh, his helmet is cool. It's got an antenna and I don't think it's movable. I think it's just static and stays in the same way. But anyway, let's look at the next one. So next up we have Tank Schmidt. He is a Sergeant, Sergeant Tank Schmidt. So the thing about this guy, let's go ahead and look at his face there. Take the helmet off and look at his face. That's what his face looks like. And now he comes with his giant cannon. Basically, his whole thing is this giant cannon. And just like all the other ones, connected to the backpack and then connected to... Uh, and and that, that's kind of faulty within itself on how, how all that works. But uh, let's see. I think you would put it this way on his shoulder. Uh, and most people would display it on the shoulder. Let me get that set up real quick. One thing I must warn you about when you mess with these figures is their hands. They break very easily. They break off. I don't know about... I've never seen a thumb snapped off. But the hands break off the joint uh, very easily. Okay, here he is with his uh, gun, and it, it holds it in his hand like that, and he has a sight for it and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it does have stickers all over his helmet and all over his chest and uh, and all of that. He does have one more party trick, and that is this. So when you open up his backpack, uh, you've got this zoner helmet that comes out, and then you also have this wire here so what it is to do is to plug in and his way of bringing zoners home is with this this helmet which the helmet should theoretically uh take them out of the sort of zombified state but let's see what it looks like sort of looks something like this he's just kind of wandering around and he's he's got his de-zoned dude uh, kind of accompanying with him so i guess that's what how it's supposed to work and kind of interesting idea more things I want to point out about this guy, and uh, this this plastic they use somehow has these brown spots in it that I've done everything. I've cleaned it with uh, everything I can think of cleaning it with, and I have also bleached it. Uh, but anyway, the other thing about this guy is that he has these cuffs, and the cuffs are pretty cool. And yeah, there he is. So let's take a look at Colonel Dirk Courage. This is his top secret file, and he's, he's 38 years old. And the leader of the group here, the commander. And it says that he has a 600 amp laser powered tunnel gun. So I guess that's what this uh, apparatus is on top here. Now, this one out of all of them, I think, has the coolest looking setup because he's got this backpack and it's it's like this thing could just come up and just shoot that tunnel gun, I guess. But he's always got these little ones, these little guns on here. In the show, 
it's a lot smaller. Those guns are a lot smaller. But uh, let's have a look at that noggin of his and handsome dude. Anyway, th they all have the same bodies, just different heads. And uh, when you get to the bad guys, they have different sculpting in their arms for... And I'll explain that when we get there. So he has gauntlets on, on his wrists here, which is cool. And then, of course, his gun is connected to his backpack. This dude's got three guns connected to his backpack. Uh, probably the most stuff connected to a backpack. And, of course, the, the actual traditional sidearm that all of them come with. All the good guys come with one. All the bad guys come with a different one. So there he is, Colonel Dirk Courage. And he's got all of his stickers, all of them and everything. Pretty cool figure. I just like the look of him and just the way he's able to pull this thing out. And now that I know it's a 600 amp tunnel gun, that's what it's for. To create a tunnel, I guess, in the side of a mountain. I'm getting into the Black Widows, and I've got his, this is Razorback. So his file card or whatever, if you want to see kind of what's going on with it. And it really doesn't go into detail about kind of what his gun is, his personal equipment. It's pretty obvious what his personal equipment is. But uh, he only comes with one of these triple crossbows. I just happened to end up grabbing an extra one in a lot or something. So I think he looks cool. He dual wields these uh, these little spike things. Now they're, they're supposed to go on his wrist, but I have to clip them to his elbows for them to stay on. So it still looks kind of cool. It's kind of a cool look. It's not functional like that at all, but uh, let's have a look at his head real quick. And then you're gonna see that these, all these guys have gone through, the bad guys gone through some sort of a process here that makes them resistant to the zone generators so they don't become zombies and they still have their own free will. And so he also has the same stuff on his arms, so this yellow and uh, orangish stuff on his arms and stuff. They do come with all, except the leader, they come with the camo red and black and then they also have a green armor so they look a little bit different than the good guys, which is good. They, they need to look different. And they each have a different helmet, different head sculpt and stuff, and all different weapons. They didn't reuse a single weapon or accessory in this toy line except for the accessory packs. So he does come with four uh, weapons and this long weapon here. So this is like a, like a staff and he has an ax and uh, kind of a saw. And then this is, this is kind of a weird looking, um, kind of a pickaxe kind of thing and then a machete and then his, his triple crossbows. Uh, they Also, the bad guy gun looks like this, and they all have a sidearm, and it clips into their little boot there, and yeah, that's Razorback. He's kinda cool. Here is Duchess Dyer, who uh, kind of played, seems like that she was playing both sides, but she wasn't. She was just all bad. She's bad to the core. Anyhow, uh, looking at her face, so she does have a boy buck, her buck is the same as the dude's. I think they changed her arms out. She has different arms and her head. And so she does feel and look a little more petite because her arms are smaller and her head's a female head sculpt. So uh, it actually kind of looks cool too. I mean, that's a nice looking head sculpt on her. Uh, her helmet is actually a pack-in in in one of the accessory packs we're gonna see here in a little bit. And then this is what her armor looks like that she wears. And uh, they all strap on with like, uh, they have a, a waist one and I'll pop this off so you can kind of see. Is she the right one? I don't want to pop it off. Yeah, this is how they connect in the back, which is kind of cool. And the vehicles all include connection for the backpacks. And then right here is another place for it to connect. Uh, she does come with this net. And so, see that's the thing about her. Everybody seems to say, hey, you make sure you've got her net. So this is a hard piece to get for some reason. And it, it looks like, I mean, I, I don't know, you could probably find net that's exactly like this and just cut it down to size and fold it and roll it up. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. The, the net was the hardest part to get on her and just so long to find one of those. But anyhow, there she is and Duchess Dyer, she was pretty cool. Next up is Overlord, and this guy, I think the they, they kind of made him look really cool. And I guess I messed with him too much. I did do the treatment to him with the wax or whatever, the polish, and he was more sturdy than this, but I guess I fiddled with this guy too much. But anyway, let's have a look at his head here and on his head. That's his interesting head sculpt. It does look a lot like the show, and a lot of these head sculpts do match the show pretty well. And uh, yeah, he looks pretty cool. And he's got all kinds of stuff on his helmet. Now his helmet can actually 
kind of fold forward. They made it on a pivoting thing, and his stickers are all coming off, but it is what it is. Anyhow, uh, I don't know why, what he does with that. I don't know if I saw that in the show. He did anything. Uh, kind of interesting when they've got the the shoulder pads. Sometimes these pop off and break off, and so that's kind of a pain. So it just is an issue with it. He does have this cool-looking triple barrel gun. Uh, I really like the gun, and it's got this... Uh, back piece here really hard to get it in his hand. I feel like you're gonna snap something off in his hand his sidearm down here Now he's different than the rest of them because he's not camouflaged and he has all black So that's different and he does come with a backpack and two missiles that launch. So uh, Basically you push it in. I don't want to lose these but and you launch it. Why is it not? Something like that you don't want to lose those because they're really hard to get all right, so here we go with Bandit, and he is the second in command. So this dude is uh, probably the most simple out of all of them. He has the least amount of stuff. He's a second in command for the bad guys, and he's always wanting to overthrow Overlord. I mean, you know, the bad guys are always wanting to overthrow their leader. That's just how it is, you know. Yeah, there it is. Here he is with his helmet, and they all have different sculpted helmets. And I was thinking his helmet was included in one of those accessory packs, but as I was going through them, I didn't see it. So I don't, all, all the time I thought, because his helmet is a little more common than the other ones. Uh, so this backpack basically folds over. All right, right here, uh, this is his sidearm, same as all the rest of them. He's got his green. Not much to this guy, and I don't really know what they call his backpack and all of that, but there he is. That's all he comes with. Quite simple dude. So next on the list, we've got Reaper here. And this dude, uh, let's see, is he being held up by the box? Yeah, most of these are still being held up by the box. Uh, he's got a mohawk. Let's check out that noggin. Take a look at that. That's a pretty cool looking mohawk he's got. And he's, he's got a beard. And oh, he's like, you know what? I'm not human looking anymore, but I still want to kind of keep some human looking traits. So there we go. There's his helmet. And his helmet is just really kind of a boring helmet. But it can't do too much because this piece here comes down and it goes over his eyes so he can like see what's going on out there and these pieces here move and they're adjustable and this whole unit can actually come up and around and stow to the back and all that kind of stuff uh, the other thing is he has uh, these guns and they're connected to his backpack this is really interesting how they did this. Uh, he's got these just giant guns, and he doesn't really hold on to them, but uh, it kind of looks like he's holding on to them. And then you could stow them away on his back if you want. Uh, it's a bit of work. It doesn't just flip around because they're connected by these. And so it's, it, to flip it onto the back, it's a pain in the butt. But anyway, I keep it displayed like this because I think it looks cool like that. This is Reaper, another one of the Black Widow bad guys. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty interesting. There's a lot of differentiation here, but there's five bad guys, four good guys. We've gone through the nine figures. Now let's go through the accessory packs. Okay, here we are with the accessory packs, and I pondered for a while whether I would bother with including them because of the fact it's going to take so long to put... The loose ones on and i don't have all of them loose or i do have all of them loose but they're not all complete anyway uh there is the first one heroes and i this is all i have of the loose one this is what he looks like it does come with a sidearm and uh all this stuff i'll show you everything in the sealed one but this is kind of what it looks like when he's got his extra stuff on and he's not wanting to hold the gun he doesn't usually hold the gun he usually just sits in his boot so they don't come with boots, so if, if you pull it right out, they expect you to put their, their boots that come with the figure on over this, but I'm not doing that with all of them, I'm only going to do it with one. Here is the unit itself, and it does come with a canteen, it comes with uh, clothes and all that stuff, and uh, he's got like a regular baseball cap and the gun sidearm. Now, if I, you can get these cheap, you can just get an extra sidearm, and then you have a shovel in there. These were originally back in the day a dollar so you kind of think i don't think that this would come out for a dollar this day and age it would be five ten ten dollars for something like this that came out this day and age but anyhow it's just kind of cool let's move to the next one that one was called the desert combat suit but this one is is actually the jet pilot suit and i really don't think they put much thought into which one's the good guy and which one is the bad guy 
Uh, but if you can tell by the gun there, this is supposed to be a good guy. So, uh, what does it come with? It comes with the jumpsuit. It comes with the 50% off, 50 cent tag. Uh, it's got the whatever you want to call it. I guess that's a parachute and stuff. And then it's got a, a helmet. Now, this helmet, uh, I think it's a remold maybe of a different, uh, like, I don't know. Maybe it's its own helmet. But anyway, it's a pretty cool helmet. So, if you see that floating around, it is Spiral Zone. It's not a broken version of Overlord like I thought at first. Okay, so here he is with it. And... Yes, you could put his black boots on and make it look better. It would look a lot cooler, but that's pretty much everything that comes with this set. And uh, a lot of people don't care about this kind of stuff. They think it's silly. So let's move on to the next one. And it's like he's wearing pajamas if he doesn't have his boots on. He's trying to slide on my surface here. So I actually think this one is coolest. This one is the Frogman suit. And he has blue jump jumping gear. And he's got, a, I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it's just... A belt and then he's got of course his apparatus to breathe he has a little knife and he's got the standard this is the bad guy gun though like I, I I just don't see this being a bad guy suit but anyway I do have an overlord in it and pretty cool he's got his breathing apparatus he has this little knife I guess so he could uh, gut a fish while he's down there or whatever you know and he has the sidearm but the coolest part about this is they actually stitched in his feet to be flippers if I can get it right if you get it just right it looks right it's got the correct look as if it's really flippers so kind of cool actually out of all of them this one is the one that's a standalone you can make it look right without having to put boots on or anything else pretty cool so next up we have the paratrooper so okay so this one here I have it loose but not complete uh, this one comes with what looks like a paratrooper kind of clothing and I guess this is the actual parachute. It doesn't really deploy, it's just a piece of plastic. And then you have this part here that goes on, the bad guy gun, and this is Duchess Dyer's helmet, which the way they package it, it's just, that thing is just shoved in there. So this helmet is an easier one to get. So that's pretty cool because it's in one of these. And also the sidearms makes them a little easier to get. So I'm kind of glad they did that. So here he is in his paratrooper. I did put his original boots on him because I just started that way. And it's like, man, I, I don't have the time to pull all the original boots off these guys. So that's what it, one would look like with original boots. I figured we could just do one like that. Uh, it, I believe I have this on the right way. So the opening generally does go to the front because it's covered with their armor. This one doesn't have the armor to cover it. So you got to kind of subvert expectations. And then this is the little pouch in the back where you'd stick that parachute looking thing so kind of cool kind of interesting i guess for a buck i mean what, what what could you get back in the day for a buck it's not bad more playability okay so i realized in editing that i got absolutely everything wrong on this guy but this is the dragon warrior suit right there and just looking at that little picture it was hard to figure out how everything was supposed to work i actually had a, everything backwards and wrong Okay, so looking at this guy, you can see that with this costume on, you can barely see the eyes. Well, you can't really see the eyes. He's, he has trouble seeing through it. But uh, this whole piece here, you're supposed to have ninja stars. Now, this I got from the Rambo toy line, from the ninjas in the Rambo toy line. So I put a star in there. The actual stars are really small, fit all the way in there, which is cool, actually. Uh, but I've never seen one, and they get lost so easy. So I guess that's the reason you need to get a, a new-in-the-package version of this. Uh, looking at the back, you have this sword that kind of sits in here like so, and that's how that sword goes in there. But uh, I see these swords in lots, and people say it's part of Spiral Zone, but I guess it's not. I don't know. I always thought it went with this, but according to uh, the pictures that I've looked at and what I'm showing you, that's not included. So uh, you do need some boots on it if you want, and I'm sure it came with a sidearm also. So uh, yeah, this is one still a bit of a mystery to me, but it's really cool. Wouldn't it be nice to have like six of these, like a little army of ninjas and complete with their throwing stars? Uh, this is the next one. They call this one the Thermal Attack Suit. Mike, are you illiterate? No, it's just really small writing. So thermal attack suit, and I'm pretty sure it does also come with a sidearm. I just uh, don't have him holding it. But it comes literally with this shiny uh, reflective suit. And he's got like a beekeeper mesh and this whole apparatus that clips on him. 
He's got this gun. So uh, that's kind of cool. And so here they are with all of their accessory pack with the different clothes. I do think that it looks so much better if you just have the standard stuff on them. They do display better like that. But uh, I guess just for show, that's what they look like with the accessory packs. You're going to see these everywhere. They're real cheap. They're easy to get. And that's why I figure, hey, let's see what they look like. All right, lastly, we're going to get into accessory packs, the gear in the accessory packs. And so here we go with the one I don't have a loose version of. And the rest I have a loose one so we can display what it does. This is the spin shot. And oddly enough, I've got the sealed one for cheaper than anyone was selling a complete uh, loose one. So I don't really know how it works because I haven't done anything with it. But I assume that you tr as you turn this, you clip it on his back. And as you turn it, it shoots. That Am I right? I might be right. That, that looks like how it works. But anyway, it does come with different little parts and pieces in here. I think I have one of those loose, but you've got this spiky ball and then you've got another like missile launcher kind of thing. So getting into the next one, this one here is, this one is called the Zone Runner and it's a cycle backpack. And so I'm going to clip this thing to Hero, even though I think uh, Tank was the one that used it the most. I think Tank's even the one in the picture. And they, they show you down here what they all look like. But let's go ahead and get into this one. So here it is as his backpack. It's clipped on and it's, it just clips on like it's supposed to. So what you do is you fold this down and it, 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 it transforms. No, it converts. No, it transforms and it converts. So anyway, it's supposed to, it should help him stand up too. And then this here, oh yeah, more stuff to help stand. That's cool. And then this comes around and it's a handle so that he can actually control this whole thing. I'm so scared of breaking a finger or hand. So Hero's gonna be demonstrating this for us and let me make sure I got this set up right. All right, so here he is properly converted, rolling along, doing his thing. So that's interesting. They did use this in the show quite a bit. I, I believe it was Tank that used it the most, but so you do have to kind of rotate this wheel around uh, to get the Foot pegs work right, so interesting, different kind of engineering than I expected on this thing, but it gets the job done. It folds up into a backpack and all that. It's a little loose. And my, mine might just be loose from age and time and all that kind of stuff, but there it goes. Let's check the next one out. So the next one is the Zone Drone Missile Launcher Backpack, and it does come with an extra, what looks like just a black version of the Hero Taka, and uh, it's exactly what it looks like and the launcher piece and the one missile so uh let's see hero you're our hero here and this is the armor well, i'm not going to swap the armor out just for this one thing but yes it's the same armor same everything just a uh, different color of course this is where they did all the reuse each individual figure has everything that's different but the reuse is in these accessory packs so let's pull this down and everything's got to transform a bit this comes out and then this comes out too and it gives him kind of a stable footing so that he could launch this and you push this button and it launches so I don't lose it of course it launch into the abyss of whatever and we lose it there it is it's cool it's different uh, I mean I, I don't know if not a lot of people don't care about this kind of stuff Next up, we have the Auto Grappler. Now, this is Hero Taka's. Like, all these things seem to be Hero Taka's except the bad guy stuff. And so, anyway, looking at this, uh, it's kind of like a remote control little drone, driving drone, a car, RC car. Uh, pop that off there, and it does connect to the backpack, but he can't really stand if that's on. So, anyway, here is the little drone car, and then he operates it via this backpack and these levers and the mechanisms there. So kind of a cool little idea. They did use this in the show. I remember seeing this in the show a lot. And he it went over there and deactivated something or started the rimfire to shoot. But it can actually grab something if need be. It could be real annoying. So, But it, it can go into the zone and do whatever it needs to do and get the job done. Kind of like we use these things for these days in real life applications. Next up we have the zone blaster. I do want to point out that it's like a tan color in the picture. But in production, it was blue, 
So here it is, and I got it on Hero Taka here. It does come with a gun, and that's Hero's gun connected to this. Except instead of being the colors of Hero's gun, it's just all silver. It does have some stickers on it and stuff like that, but it, it really only does one thing. And I'm, I'm going to risk losing this. It's the only one I have. Launch. Oh, that didn't go that far. And lastly, we got the Snapper Claws, and I don't know much about this. I think he's supposed to hold right here, and that's kind of how it works. But uh, my figure is A, loose, and this just feels, like, not right. But anyhow, that that's how it looks like it's supposed to work. You you can open up these claws, and they're, they're not spring-loaded or anything. Well, I guess they are. I thought they weren't spring-loaded. No, they're not. You push this in, and it'll grab. So, not really spring-loaded, but still kind of an interesting feature. It's different, and I don't have much information on this, but that's all I know it does. Uh, I'm sure that they should store somehow when they're out of use. So that's also something interesting. Let's see how they store. It appears they plug into here. Seems like they would plug in on the opposite sides of that. But, yeah, there is storage for it. When he's not in use, he's just going to be up to some trouble. And it's like, uh, I think I need to pull my claw out. And let's get out to some business. Lastly, we're going to touch on the vehicles. This video is already getting way too long. So I'm going to do vehicles in the future. I have none of mine complete. I've got boxed incomplete vehicles. I think it's crazy. That's how I found them. But uh, they found them cheaper, I guess. But now I haven't found any parts for them. So this is the sledgehammer. We'll talk about that. Uh, this one here is... The zone cycle, uh, do they have the picture of the actual item? Yeah, there it is. So that is a cool looking thing. It's my favorite out of all of them, uh, the cycle. And so with that, uh, the windshield, uh, I, I think it's the hardest piece to get to all this. So tracking all this stuff down is a whole lot of fun, but I've got these big pictures so I can kind of see what parts I still need. This is the rim fire. And uh, I just look, somebody's like asking like 300 bucks for a ball or 150 bucks for one of the launching rimfire balls that's crazy but it's a pretty cool looking vehicle but again once i get them all complete i'll do a vehicle uh video about this this is the bullwhip or eight by eight so that's a pretty cool vehicle also now this one i specifically went after because this was also supposed to be a rambo but i don't know if they made it in rambo uh an eight by eight is i think what they called it but it's still really cool it's big it's massive uh it's a big vehicle uh, for this line, the biggest in the line. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe uh, it's the longest, that's for sure. And we have this thing right here, which is the sledgehammer. Sledge, sledgehammer. So I just got made the pictures of these so I could see what all parts I need. And because uh, the resources online are sketchy and hard to uh, figure out. So I know that I look for these parts whenever I'm looking and I can get these things completed. But essentially, Toy Ploy did a rebuild on one of these. And as you uh, roll the treads, these things flop around and slam sledgehammer. They slam like sledgehammer. So I uh, look forward to getting mine up and running 100% like this. So I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive look at Spiral Zone from Tonka from 1987. This toy line is not really that big, but really hard to collect. It has nine figures, four vehicles, and a total of 12 accessory kits and that's all that comes with it. That's all that they made. And yet it's still hard to track it all down. It, it took me a long time. And I still got a ways to go. But anyway, let me know what you think about this toy line. Do you collect this toy line? Do you remember this toy line? Do you remember only seeing this on your shelves? Because this is all I saw were these accessory packs on my shelves in my Walmart in my town back in 1987. Like and subscribe. Tidarium Hanger out. Zone Riders, looks like we're coming to a commercial.